All right, so today we got our potent little 302 here, and we're going to go ahead and make a video on determining your push rod length so that you have proper rocker arm geometry, and when you're spinning up to 6,500 RPM, you don't throw a push rod through the valve cover. So uh, um, we're going to get right to it then. So some of the essential parts and pieces here to make this happen is uh, you first of all want to have some lightened valve springs. And as you can see, I've already switched out the uh, supplied valve springs for these lightened valve springs. Now I just got these down the, uh, down the road at my local hardware store for a couple of bucks and swapped those out. So that was real simple. Um, you also want a whiteboard marker and we'll get to that later. Obviously your adjustable push rod length checker, uh, rocker arm, and you want to use the rocker arm that uh, you're going to use when the engine's completed. That's important a couple of lifters and uh, your rocker stud assemblies and then a head gasket and you should be good to go. So uh, we're going to get right after it. Now first things first here is you want to work with the valve that's on the base circle of the cam. Now when I say the base circle is you have a lift lobe on your cam and to start determining and uh, figuring your push rod length you want to be on the back side of that lift lobe and we call that the base circle. So to get there and to know we're there for sure, um, you know, some people like to go to top dead center of the compression stroke, but uh, you know you're on the base circle of the cam if your opposing valve is at its full lift dwell. So and when I say dwell, it'll get to a point and it'll kind of hover there for, you know, a few degrees of rotation. And that's when we know we can start working um, on our opposing valve. So in this case, this is our exhaust valve, and I guess we'll uh, go ahead and start with that one. Okay, so we got our adjustable push rod in here, and um, I personally like to use these comp cams adjustable push rods because every rotation is a 50 thousandths graduation on the, uh, on the push rod, and since they come in nominal lengths, so this one in particular is 5.8 it's really easy to determine the uh, the length that you, of the push rod you need when you've uh, finally completed this procedure so anyway we got that in there and we have it adjusted and again it's a system of trial and error here you're um, we're looking for the tightest pattern we can get so and this is where the whiteboard marker comes in so what we're gonna do is we're gonna color in the top of our valve stem and then we're going to go ahead and uh, run our rocker arm down on here and then adjust our uh, rocker nut until we have no play in our rocker, but we don't want to put any load on the rocker either. So I'm going to go ahead and get this on here and we're going to move on from there. All right, as we see, we have our rocker on here and our rocker nut on. And notice I took out my Allen key set screw because uh, I don't want it to interfere with this measurement. So we just go until right there where I can feel that everything's getting tight. Now this is where uh, your springs really shine. You want these springs to be light enough that they do not overpower the spring pressure that's inside of your lifters. So even though they're not pumped up, they do have some pressure in them and if you have a light enough spring, those will not be overcome. If you're pushing this plunger down on your lifter, you're getting a bad reading. So you want to watch this and make sure that um, it, that uh, uh, push rod cup is not moving away from this retainer clip on the one that you're checking. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and make a few rotations on our engine here and see how she patterns up with this measurement. Okay, so we've rotated the engine over a few times and we got a good pattern going here. And uh, as you can see it there, you all obviously you want a pattern that works through the center of your valve stem, but also what you're going for is the smallest uh, pattern width that you can get. So ideally 50 thousandths width or smaller of a pattern. So in this case, I'm already, uh, I'm sitting just below 50 thousandths. So I'm pleased with this. Um, but what you want to do when you're uh, going through this procedure is you're going to want to run this, uh, your adjustable push rod 50 thousandths more and then 50 thousandths below of what you think 
that your ideal measurement is just to be sure. So again, you should see a pattern working through the center and smaller than 50 thousandths. And you want to do this for the exhaust and the intake valve, and then you want to do this at the four corners of the engine. Um, and it should be it should be linear across the uh, across the engine as the base circle of the camshaft should be the same on the intake and exhaust regardless of lift. So, anyway, as you can see, pretty simple here. So kind of understanding our push rod here is that uh, in our case we had 10 and a half turns from um, its shortest length here. So with each turn being 0.05 or 50 thousandths and with 10 turns that's, uh, that'll be 0.5 overall and then plus a 0 0.025 for uh, our half a turn. Now we're going to add that to our nominal length of 5.8 which our push rod is uh, at its shortest length and we're going to get 6.325. Now this is where it gets a little different for me. Now if you use your head gasket in this, uh, this will be your final number. Now in my case, as you noticed, I left my head gasket out. Now since everything is working linearly and at 90 degree angles, this is fine if you have a gasket that you know the compressed thickness. So in my case I have a performance gasket and I know that compressed it's .039. So in, in my case, I'm going to be here with a push rod of 6.364. Now we're going to go to the next closest push rod measurement and that's going to obviously be our 6.350. And that's what we went with with this engine and it still patterns up very well. All right, so with our 5.0 engine, you can see next to this, uh, this is actually a 6.35 push rod and then this is a stock 6.25 push rod. Now it seems like very little difference but when I was when I put this in just to get a baseline of where I was at with my engine uh, this push rod was right at the most um, the tip of the uh, valve stem the tip closest to the intake manifold so it was obviously far too short and then we had to go with our longer push rod but uh, you can see that determining push rod length is an inexact science and there's a lot of people that will try and tell you that you can do it through a math equation but um, you know I've tried that method and it just doesn't quite work out so you always want to make sure that you take the time and uh, you know get your pattern on your valve stem and there's a whole host of things that can factor into this so like I said you want to check all your valves. So in this case these are AFR heads and even so um, you can see that some of the valves are longer than others. So it's a real inexact science and uh, you know kind of hard to determine but as long as you get a pattern that's 50 thousandths or less and you're running within the center of your valve stem you should be good to go and spin that baby up to uh, 6500 rpm without worry so anyway that's it my little take on determining push rod length